Thanks for checking out this movie review video. This is for the 2024 film Baghead. It's a Shudder exclusive, and it's coming to Shudder on Friday, April 5th. So this is a no-spoiler review. So this is actually a film that's based off a short film. So whenever I see that, I get really apprehensive because I'm like, oh no, how did they take that? and put enough in there to make it a feature-length film and make it good. Because uh, a lot of the times when that kind of jump ends up happening, there's a lot of filler. I will say, they did a pretty solid job with taking a short and making it a feature film in this instance. Uh, this isn't a film I'm like, oh my gosh, it's so amazing, it's like a must-see, but it's pretty solid. So if anyone has seen the trailer for this one or heard about this one, and you had even a little bit of interest, I'd say go ahead and check it out, give it a shot. Uh, plus, you know, low-budget independent horror. Let's let's support it. It's great. So again, Baghead, directed by Alberto Carrera, uh, sorry, Corridor, uh, who did the Baghead short film. That's the only other thing they did. And I will say, for a feature film directorial debut, pretty good job. Uh, from a directorial standpoint, cinematography standpoint, and a bunch of other technical stuff that I'll talk about, this is a very good start for a filmmaker with a feature-length film. So... A uh, promising individual here, I would say. Written by Christina Pamis. Uh, last name's P-A-M-I-E-S. I hope I said that correctly. My apologies. Uh, Bryce McGuire, who also wrote Unfollowed and Night Swim, which I'm hearing really bad things about Night Swim. Uh, might check it out at some point. Let me know in the comments if I should or not. And Lorcan Riley, who wrote The Other One, which I have not seen. Uh, again, Shutter exclusive coming Friday, April 5th. So quick synopsis. What is this about? It's about a girl whose father she kind of didn't have a relationship with. He ends up passing away. And when he passes away, he has a property that ends up becoming hers. Well, she has to make a choice about what she wants to do with it. She decides to keep the property instead of selling it. And there's a reason for that that you'll, you'll find out in the film. But uh, there's something interesting about this uh, property, something in the basement of this property, and it ties into the title of the film, Baghead. So, it, I mean, if you've seen the trailer, you probably know already a lot more, but I don't want to go too far into it. Obviously, it's horror. It has a good, um, you know, like, ghost-ish aspect to it. So if that's your thing, check it out. If it's not your thing, you may still enjoy it. Just saying. So early on in the film, the score is a bit over the top. That's one thing that I always harp on when the score feels like it's being cranked up too much and used too much to kind of scream at you as an audience member. I do kind of say we should kind of be a little more restrained, kind of take that down a little bit. And also to do it so early on in the film, it just kind of sets a tone of like, okay, this is how it's going to be. We're going to be very over the top with the score. So I would have liked that to be more restrained. But the composition of the score, well done. It works very well. It actually helps a lot with the atmosphere that they end up creating for this film and the overall feel of it. So composition good, use and volume, not great. Need a little work. Uh, there is use of CGI in this. Um, and it's not the best CGI. It's not the worst CGI. It kind of hits somewhere in between. Sometimes it's looking pretty wonky. Other times it's looking pretty solid, and even though this movie is relatively dark, even though it is lit well enough for the most part, there are a few moments where it's like, eh, maybe they should have lit this a little bit better, but not too bad. Uh, it certainly is an Alien vs. Predator Requiem, which is like unwatchable because it's so dark. But, um, but yeah, CGI typically works the best in darker scenes. But for a particular reason, some of the CGI did not work the best in dark scenes with this. I don't want to say why, because that would kind of tip the hand to something that does happen in the film. But you'll see what I mean when you see the CGI. Like, it looks a little wonky on the edges. The actual, like, physics of some of the stuff doesn't look the best. But it's also not the worst. It's definitely not the worst CGI I've seen by any stretch of the imagination. So, good enough, really. The opening sequence of the film is interesting, and it definitely makes you want to find out what ultimately is going on with the film. I do think where they started with this was a good premise. And I figured that would be the case, knowing that it was a short film at one point and then became a feature film. Usually people don't take a short film that's not that interesting and make it a feature length. Usually there's something there. There's a great concept. There's a great idea. It's just all how they develop it out from there and make it a full feature length thing. And I think they did a pretty solid job with this one. Not like, it's not phenomenal, 
but pretty solid. I'd be interested to actually check out the short. Maybe I should have done that, actually. Maybe I should go back and check that out. But anyway, if anyone's seen short, let me know how it is in comparison to this. And actually, this is a good time in the middle of this to let you know. Put some comments down there. We can talk spoilers if you want to and let me know if you like it, if you hated it, are you in between on it, whatever. And then I can also just say thumbs up on this video if you want to help me with the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to my channel if you want to help me out and support me. And hit the notification bell button if you want to know when I'm putting up new videos, which is like pretty much every day. But anyway, continuing. The shooting location for this. Camera work, color palette, and the score composition really come together in a very effective way to make it feel creepy. It's got a great atmosphere. It's got a great feel to it. It's got this creepy kind of dark, scary vibe to it. And the shooting location was pretty much perfect for what they were looking for for this. Set design works extremely well. Uh, and like I said, camera work, good. Like I said before, cinematography, directing, quite nice. Um, so all those things really come together in a symbiotic way to just make it feel really good. It has a wonderful feel to the film. The acting really sells some pretty well-written dialogue, too. Um, dialogue isn't easy to write. I've written some scripts in my time. You know, nothing's like, you know, very small short films independently. But um, I've written some scripts in my time. Dialogue is not easy, especially finding a voice for individual people because there is this tendency for you to write the dialogue the same way for every single character but it actually makes more sense if you kind of give them all their own voices and so they do that with this film and i think that um it's pretty well written too like there are times you'll see films where, you're, where you just know the dialogue is not written very well because the interactions feel awkward they feel kind of wooden and part of that is the acting as well but the dialogue is well written for this, and like I said, the actors really do a good job of selling that dialogue, and that's one of the big things, is a really solid cast from this film. Um, there weren't any performances where I was like, oh my gosh, that's an unbelievable performance, but there also weren't any times where I was like, that's kind of shaky or that's bad. Everyone knows what they're doing. These are They seem like seasoned actors who are doing the job quite well, so that's always a big plus. And it's hard to get you know, that level of talent sometimes for these lower budget independent films. The big, there is a big reveal in this film and it's done very effectively and it presents an interesting story. It's relatively early on in the film. It's within the first half an hour that gives you a really good idea past the first sequence that kind of hooks you in, hooking you in a little further, giving you a little bit more of this story, but also creating a lot more questions that make you like, okay, I was interested before, I'm even more interested now, where are we going with this? Unfortunately, I do think that at some point, it feels like they get a little bit stuck with what's going on, and therefore it ends up suffering some pacing issues, which usually going from short film to feature, uh, you have a lot worse pacing issues, so it wasn't terrible, but you do get some pacing issues from time to time where it feels like things are being kind of repeated, and you're just like, okay, if we feel a little bit stuck, can we get going again? Eventually they do, obviously. The ending has a lot more momentum than some portions before it, so that's always a good thing. Um, there are some solid scares in this. Not a ton of them, but there are a few moments where, I mean, it didn't make me jump. I could see it making some other people jump, but the design of the scares are effective and a lot of that actually help well a lot of what helps that is that great creepy atmosphere and feel that i was saying they they were able to create create with the film and the ending is pretty solid it's not like the greatest ending it's not a bad ending it's pretty much in the middle it's a decent ending for what this film is there was one interesting idea in particular baked into the ending that I was like, okay, I didn't think they were going to take it this direction, but I'm kind of glad they did. I thought that was kind of a cool element to throw in there. Um, so yeah, but right now I'm going to go ahead and uh, give you my rating and then I'll say something about the thematic stuff at play in the film in case people don't want to know about thematic things with the movie. You can turn this off. So out of five stars, half stars in play, I'm going to give this a very solid three star rating it's worth checking out. So now, if you don't want to know the thematic stuff about this, you can go ahead and turn this off. So the last thing I'm going to say thematically, this film deals in loss, parental relationship issues, you know, like kids with their parents, and things people want answers to from those who have passed away. Uh, I think it's something that can hit home with a lot of people. 
I mean, I know me personally at the moment when I'm doing this video, I'm going through the process of grieving my cat because she is in kind of the final stages of cancer and she, we don't know how much time she has left. Um, we think it's kind of soon, but this is the first time we've had to deal with something hard like this. So I'm not going to say the movie speaks to me in that sense, but it is kind of relatable for that reason, are these kind of loss issues. And it's something that gets dealt with a lot in horror in general. And it's effective. It definitely is effective. But the fact that it wasn't just about loss is pretty nice, that it is about more um, about the parental issues, about like wanting answers to things that either maybe you don't need answers to or maybe it's better off you don't have answers to. And I know a lot of people kind of have dealt with those things in their life. But anyway, um, like I said, three out of five stars for this. I do think go ahead and check it out. Give it a go. See if it's for you. And like I said, comment, subscribe, like, hit the notification bell, all that jazz. But regardless, I appreciate everyone taking their time to watch this. Uh, that means a lot to me. And um, everyone, keep it brutal.